um, and yeah, TikTok came up. I was bored. Yeah. So we thought about going on there. It was never an idea of trying to get business out of it. I always liked the idea of just doing it for education and fun. First video I did, it was literally just five things you need before applying for a home loan. And that's the one that got the 700,000 views yeah, straight away. Going one, going twice, no. All right, guys, welcome back to The Property Pod, your weekly engagement into real estate here in the Hobart Marketplace. I am your host, Aaron Horn, and sitting opposite me in someone else's chair is Johnny Mack. What's happening, mate? I like it. I'm just, you know, I just I, obviously I'm not going to be able to. It's going to be framed for Patrick's height. Yeah, so gonna... don't worry. I've, I've manoeuvred it around to, <laughs> to fit your, your curly locks, Better so way. all is good. But, yeah, you're sitting in Pat's seat. Where is where is Pat? Vegas, I believe. Vegas, baby. <laughs> yes, Pat is uh, not with us in the studio today. He is... Um, Growing his mind, yeah, at yeah. Uh, the Inman um, conference. I'm actually glad he's going because he missed it last time. He loves the loves that conference. He does, yeah. he does, and yeah, I, he's already been like texting through all these things. He's just like, oh, we should try this, we should try this. And I yeah. think he's been there for a day. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's um he's over there, kind of yeah, learning from that. I don't know if he took a mic or anything last time he was there. He took that little thing I had. For yeah, the use. Uh, not this time. No. No. So it's all just smack bang business this time. But well, um, my, he's got the whole family coming in too. Last time he was pretty much on his own. Yeah, it was just him and him and Abby, I believe. But yeah, yeah this is sort like, of a different experience. Yeah, yeah. So they're having a blast over mm. there, and we're here in the studio. And luckily, we uh, filled the third seat with an amazing guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really excited to have um uh, Rihanna from Durant Finance, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So, um, it's been. We had a mortgage broker on for a long time. We actually haven't had a guest on for a red hot minute. Yeah, it's been yeah. it's been few and far between. Life's kind of been uh, getting in the way. So yeah, it'd be nice to have someone else in the studio to to wax lyrical with. We'll have to be on our best behaviour and try and um yeah. Well, I think too because they they started their business um must have been about seven or eight years ago. Yeah, uh, it'd be I'm really excited just to chat from you know a person from like a, a younger person's perspective in this space. Yeah, rather. yeah. Um, I mean, in the end, we're like late thirties at this point, you know. So, but then when you got other guests that are generally speaking you're associating in their 40s and 50s so it's a very different um you know dynamic of personality so yeah and just the way they're kind of leveraging um new media and, and yeah kind of, to, to engage their clients tiktok yeah. is the thing that got us together to, to have this conversation so it's quite amazing that um yeah that's how how our worlds are engaging and, and colliding so what i might do is uh cut away to um the conversation that we're going to have with uh rihanna from doing finance love it Awesome. Well, guys, we are joined by a special guest uh, with us today. We've got Rihanna Farnan from Dillant Finance. Uh, welcome to The Property Pod. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I was so excited when you reached out um, a few weeks ago to come yeah. on. Well, so, very excited. Yeah, it's funny. The way we kind of connected was via TikTok, which, um, yeah, is a, a strange thing to say in this modern world. I was so against kind of diving into the world of it. It was actually yourself who... Um, got me into TikTok, which is a funny thing. Yeah, someone said, have you seen what these guys that do and finance are doing? They're kind of taking the mundane out of um, finance and, and making it fun. So I, I jumped on and I was like, oh, maybe I should be playing in this space. So, yes, thank you for uh, for, for putting it out there and, and bringing it to to my attention. So, yeah, you're, you're a TikTok star. Welcome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's not do that. Um, do you want to kind of uh, let the listeners out there know a little bit about yourself and, and kind of do and finance and, and hit us with? Um, everything that's happening in your world? Yeah, no problem at all. So obviously my name is Rihanna um, and I'm one of the directors of Duant Finance. We've been around for seven years in September. Yeah, congratulations. That's great. Yeah, which is funnily enough the due date of our baby is the um, end of it, like the opening date. You're joking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we might have two babies yeah. <laughs> to celebrate on the same day. Oh, that's amazing. Um, but we are located in Hobart, Tasmania, but we service Australia-wide, so we've got clients all over Australia, which is really cool to be in little old Hobart and then have clients in Darwin or WA or Yeah, Queensland. 100%. Um, so it's been really cool to open up and have people everywhere. Um, and, yeah, it's myself and Emmanuel and we have got seven staff now, so we've got five mortgage brokers and then we've got a couple of in-house um, settlements officers and an office manager um, and we also have an intern at the moment as well. Um, so over the last 12 months, we've grown our team from three to wow. seven. Yeah, yeah, wow. That's exponential growth, eh? Like seven years and then it was just you two. Uh, and then to go from three to doubling in 12 yeah. months. Yeah. Yeah, it has been crazy. We bought an office in the Hobart CBD thinking we'd be there forever and now yeah. Emmanuel and I don't have a desk. Yeah, wow. So you're actually kind of outgrowing your yeah, space just in yeah. that little period. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, so it's very exciting. but. 
kind of run us through the the philosophies and the the ideas of doing finance and kind of how you've gone from this tiny little operator into kind of like, hey, we're making a bit of a splash here. Yeah, for sure. So we always wanted to. Um, we Emmanuel and I worked as a team for a really long time, so it was just the two of us. Um, Emmanuel would do all the broking, I would do all the customer communications. Um, and then from there, really, we've just burnt ourselves out, to be completely honest. Yep. It was something that we couldn't do forever. Um, and so as the company's grown and we've got a reputation for ourselves, we've actually had people reaching out to us to come as a mortgage broker themselves. Okay. Um, so that's really how we've grown. Um, and when you have someone approach you to be a mortgage broker who's already trained, you can't really say no because there's not that many around. No, no. Um, it's not a career that you just leave school and go, I'm going to become a mortgage broker. Well, yeah, so, yeah. I kind of wanted to ask about how you kind of found yourself into this space. Like I've been listening to your podcast and you mentioned, you know, it's funny, you mentioned um, you've got a degree that you don't use. Oh, I trained to be a teacher. Oh, really? That's the yeah, furthest <laughs> thing from what I'm doing. I didn't train um, for anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm a real estate. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I just kind of wondered how you kind of, yeah, found your way into into. Yeah, and, so and Emmanuel had a, was working for his family business. Yep. Um, so he was with them since he was really young, decided that he wanted to do something else. His cousin was a mobile lender for a bank yep. um, and he was seeing what he was doing. He liked the idea of the being able to get commission and earning money that's cool. not from a family business um, and he really liked the idea of writing home loans. He was already really um, interested in property as it was. So he dived into that space. Um, he then had a really good opportunity a couple of years later to work in a real estate agent's office, which okay. was really cool. Um, and then eventually as that was picking up, the agency basically said, you need to get someone to help you or, you know, you're not going to be able to continue growing. Yeah, yeah. It was that awkward stage where he couldn't really afford to yes. hire a staff member. Um, I had a really good job at the time. I was doing marketing for vicinity centres, yep. so our Eastlands and Northgate yeah, or sure. like Chadston and things like that. Um, and, yeah, so basically I came on to work with him for two days. It was planned to be while I was at uni. Yep. Um, and then it just never stopped. And then you keep going. I know it's crazy. <laughs> it's even the same with my role here. I jumped in. Um, I ran into Pat in a coffee shop. He said, you still teaching? I said, nah. <laughs> I've got a job for you. I don't want to sell real estate. No, 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 don't worry about that. I've got six months' worth of photos for you to take and then you're out of my hair. Yeah. Five years later, here we are, yeah, but 160 yeah, episodes of the podcast. And it's the best thing I've ever done. Yeah, like, it's, it's so rewarding. I love what I do. Yep. Um, I love – I don't just do – like I've never been interested in numbers and things like that. I'm very dyslexic. So <laughs> the mortgage broking space and doing the writing of the deals has never been something that I've been interested in, but I love business and I love marketing and I love growing yep. um, and thinking outside of the box. So that challenge for me just kept me going. The market's continually changing, as you know, in real estate. Um, so I love that it's never the same. You've always got to be thinking differently. Um, yeah, I guess it's, it's as you say, or you've said before in your podcast that um, you don't use the degree that you've earned. And I often think, oh, like I'm not using any of that. But when you do translate it into like I might not be teaching people in a classroom, but I'm teaching people mm. things through here or, yeah, all the skills that you have picked up do bleed over mm. into the other place. And as you say, like you're really interested in marketing. Your marketing is what kind of got us um, in touch with one another through this idea of social media and, mm. and taking that to the next level. How have you found like leveraging that into like do you feel like that's one of the major things that's grown don't find Oh for sure yeah. yeah so obviously um as young mortgage brokers at the time when I got into the industry I was only 18 yep. um Emmanuel was 22 so it was really hard for us at the start to gain trust in the community because not everyone is going to trust Yep well how's this yahoo going to know how year to old to do um, their mortgage, yep. one of the biggest life things that you're ever going to do yep. and yeah. one of the yeah. biggest risks as well. Um, so it was really slow for us to start with. We would get family and friends and that type of thing come to us. Um, but then it got to the stage where we really just wanted to grow. Um, and, yeah, I had TikTok. It started in 2020 during lockdown yep. and I just thought I'd give it a go. Um, and then, yeah, from there, the first video got, I think, 700,000 views. Wow. And myself and Emmanuel were out for breakfast and um, our phone just kept ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing and we had to leave the breakfast because it was just like, what is going on? Yeah. It's like a dream overnight yeah. um, with all of the phone calls we received. So from there, we've just been so lucky. We've been able to hire 
um, or mortgage brokers. So we've now got five brokers yep. um, and we provide all of their leads to them. They don't need to go out and find their own business because it all comes primarily from TikTok. Yeah, yeah. isn't that amazing? And it's this thing that's been like kind of, oh, that's just for the kids. Like that's just a silly thing where yeah. people do dances and <laughs> – it's, yeah. It actually yeah. legitimate, legitimate platform, legitimately, yeah. yeah, has has grown your business yeah. to this, and I this think crazy it level. Hasn't just helped us; it's helped other mortgage brokers as well. So mm. now seventy percent of mortgages are written by mortgage brokers. Yeah, um, and quite often as well, I'll have people reach out to me, and it just warms my heart. And they'll say, "I've been following you on TikTok for three years. I didn't reach out to you because I wanted to have a broker in house, but without you, I would have never have gone to a broker. I would have just gone to a bank, as my mum and dad would have told me to do. Yeah, and I would have never gotten a mortgage." And so it's just so nice to hear that not only am I helping do, and I'm also helping people reach out to other mortgage brokers around the country. Yeah, indirectly helping your industry. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what was the, um, when you started that originally, was the idea being that you wanted to do branding or was it more so about an education? What was the angle that you guys had? It was more so that it was just COVID and I was bored. <laughs> that works. <laughs> that works. Yeah. yeah. And it, we found that we couldn't grow on Instagram and Facebook yeah. like other brokers have. Yes. We've got a very in Hobart, we've got we're very lucky with the brokers we've already got. Yeah. We've got a lot of experience mm. um, and people that have been in the industry for a very long time. And so it's not that easy for someone just to share your Facebook post about finance mm. because they're already committed to their That's mortgage it. broker. Yeah. So it wasn't easy for us to grow on there. Um, and yeah, TikTok came up, I was bored. Yeah. So we thought about going on there. It was never an idea of trying to get business out of it. I always liked the idea of just doing it for education and fun. I was going to say one of the things that I find really interesting about it is that, that it's providing that educational service and, yeah, it's not just like let's just do this silly yeah. thing. And, yeah, I'm reading through and people are constantly sending you through, like can you just give me an idea of I've got two dependents, I've got this and that, and your little things are popping up. I'm just like, oh. Yeah. Like, that's so interesting. That's actually yeah. quite similar to my situation. Yeah. Like yeah. I might have to reach out and find out more about this. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's- the first video I did, it was literally just five things you need before applying for a home loan and that's the one that got the 700,000 yeah, views straight okay, away. Yeah, right. yeah. And I never, even for the first two years, I never put in, I didn't have a link in the bio for a website. Yep. I didn't tell people to reach out to us. I just purely was giving content about education about home loans yep. and people were just organically reaching out and it's a free platform. You don't have to spend any money. No. If you're using Google or Facebook or Instagram for ads, you're investing money but with TikTok I'm just investing five minutes of my day to film something, edit it and post it and then comment back. That's um, amazing. Mm. Yeah, that's super cool. And, look, it's obviously worked. It's someone, yeah, told me to look you up and, yeah, we've connected through TikTok. So mm. yeah, shout out to that platform as a way of yeah making actually organic um, connections. Mm. What, what I find interesting about that, he mentioned someone had been observing that content for a few years before they were ready to make that commitment. And I know when I first started in this career, there was a guy who was an exceptional operator, but in like, in he, he was about 30, but he looked 17. And he said, the only way that you can overcome that if you look young is to have to jump through more hoops. It's the only way that people – he said you have to wear them down. Um, the great thing about establishing yourself in that um, space was you, you, you guys were great operators, um, but that allowed you to have that credibility built over time so that when the business started to flow through, they did see you as an expert and were prepared to listen to you. It wasn't like, oh, you're a kid, you want my business, what do you can do for me? You know, it's mm-hmm. like, hey – you came together as equals and were then able to provide, you know, show them, hey, actually these guys are great at what they do. That's really yeah, interesting. For sure. When we started, we obviously tried doing the cold calls and the door knocking and the pamphlets and all yeah. of that type of thing and it just didn't work because, yeah, of the age. Um, and saying we're trying to hire staff, people didn't want to come and work for us because of our age, but now because we've got the – resources of having the face of Don't Finance and TikTok and um, that platform, it has really grown where we have people reaching out all the time asking how they can get into mortgage broking and also obviously clients as well. Um, So it's grown our business not only with clients but also being able to hire staff and grow a team. It's so funny. I've probably mentioned this on the podcast before but growing up I remember it being like don't talk to strangers online <laughs> like don't go if you don't know who they are don't talk to them where now it's like oh i want to 
search out and find strangers and I want them to help me. Mm. It's a complete flip on it. And as you say, like the letterbox dropping and stuff seems so old hat when you can spend five minutes making a tea or something, film it, pop some information on it and yeah. boom, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to um, engage Yeah, TikTok's also people. become the biggest search engine online yeah. as well. So more people are searching on TikTok for businesses and um, like say – you're searching for a mortgage broker, more people are now inclined to go onto TikTok to search for a mortgage broker than on Google. Yeah, wow. So, and on Facebook and Instagram. So it's really important that, and we're so lucky that we jumped on that early. Yeah. 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 We could get that reach. Oh, well, I'm so glad that I yeah found that as well because, yeah, we're exploring in the space and yeah, having some fun with this podcast is actually really good content for yeah pumping on there sort of thing. So, yeah, our goal here at the Property Pod is to try and educate kind of first home buyers and stuff as well, and and get young people into homes. Um, yeah, we think we kind of align on that. Mm. I just wondered if we could go into kind of like the three biggest like common mistakes or misconceptions people have. Yeah, so the biggest misconception we're seeing at the moment is listening to people that aren't professionals and taking on their advice. Yep, like um, people on TikTok. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not qualified then yeah <laughs> um but yeah mums and dads and I know um real life personal experience is really important but when it comes to an area that you're taking into consideration your fi- your, your income it's not just about yes and no it changes for every person um we find that a lot of people will speak to their friends and family about getting a home loan and they'll give advice like oh before you get a home loan, make sure you go out and get a credit card or a personal loan. And so they do. And then they finally come to a broker and they say, oh, we got a credit card. And it's like, well, now it's decreased your borrowing capacity by 100,000. Yeah, so that's one of the biggest misconceptions is listening to mum and dad. And I know that sounds funny and I know mums and dads will try to do the best they can to help their um, children get into the market, but it's really important Finance and getting a home loan and that type of thing, it changes so much. It changes, the bank's policies change every couple of weeks. So from when they bought a house or even when their friend bought a house and that type of thing, the information changes all the time. So, yeah, making sure you're speaking to a professional. If you're going to speak to family and they give you advice, reach out to a professional first and ask them if that's okay. Most of the time mortgage brokers don't charge a fee for their services so you can reach out to them at any time and ask for your, their opinion based on your personal circumstances to see what they think on the situation before you go ahead and proceed yeah. um, to make sure that you're in the best position possible. Um, the next misconception we have a lot still which is really surprising is that you still need a 20% deposit to purchase your first home when yeah. That's really not the case. There's so many options out there. You could use a guarantor if you are in that lucky position where you do have the option of having mum and dad or your grandparents or an auntie use their property as a security against the property you're purchasing. Um, And that way you don't need any deposit at all, which can be really, really helpful. Um, There's also schemes out there like the First Home Guarantee Scheme where you only require the 5% deposit and your lender's mortgage insurance is waived. Um, So there's lots of different options out there. If you wanted to still, if you're not qualified for the First Home First Home Guarantee Scheme, then you can also look at using lender's mortgage insurance as well, which I know it sounds a bit like, oh, I don't really want to spend that money. But a lot of the time the lender's mortgage insurance is less than a 20% deposit. So if you do go down that avenue, you're probably going to get in a house a lot quicker than if you were to save that full 20%. Is is that the scheme now as well where um, like if your brother and sister or something like that, you can... You can like it wasn't in in the past. You weren't able to yeah. kind of get a mortgage together, but now that's yeah. Feasible. So of the first of July, they kind of revamped the scheme, so it's yeah. been going on for three years. And personally, it's our favourite scheme um, because the government don't hold ownership over your property. Yeah. Um, once it's done, you never have to think about it again. Um, for us, it's a really simple process as well. Um, but on the first of the July, they revamped it. So you can now purchase with a sibling or a friend. Yep. Um, if you're a permanent resident, you can now go under the scheme where originally it was only for Australian citizens. Um, mm-hmm. And also the big one is if you owned a property 10 years ago, so you haven't held ownership over a property in the last 10 years, you're now eligible for the first home guarantee scheme as well. Oh, that's cool, yeah. I didn't know that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's really handy. Yep. For, so say you were an owner before and then yep. you've been in the rental market for... 10 years. Yeah. It's kind of yeah, revamped back into I'm a first home buyer again. Well, 
I mean, gosh, we, the, the, the experiences that we see with people um, over their lifetime is dramatic. You know, you can have a catastrophic relationship breakup in, you know, in your early 20s, all that, um, all that wealth gone, and then you try and find a way to, you know, muster your way back in, um, only that you're just, you can't compete anymore. So I think that makes perfect sense. And I think that for a lot of people, I mean, I've had, um, you know, guys have been quiet on our podcast before saying, look, I'm a single mum. I had this blah, blah, blah before, but now I'm stuck. You know, it, it just gives those people the capacity to compete again. Mm. Well, single parent. So if you're a single parent and you have held ownership over a property 12 months ago or six weeks ago, but you no longer do, you can go through the family home guarantee scheme and you it, you don't have a limit on when you have owned a property before. Um, so as long as you don't hold ownership over a property now, you can actually go through the single parenting scheme and that's only a 2% deposit. So that's really mm, handy. Yeah, yeah. Obviously you don't get the help of the stamp duty waiver or first home owner's grant or that type of thing, but at least you've got the option of just putting down a 2% deposit. Like, like this is this is exactly why we love having someone like yourself on the show is like you've got this knowledge base of like we'll cater or tailor a service to your needs and whatever you're after, we'll find a way of making it work sort of thing. Like even as you're saying that, I'm like, ah, oh, I know someone that that would help out. Like and that's something that I have no idea of and, yeah, you can search it on or your mum and dad say, oh, you go to the bank, that's where you get a loan. Like, no, these people will, yeah, be able yeah. to help you out. Can I go back to you were saying like the policies and stuff might change week to week from the um, banks. How are you kind of keeping abreast of, are they like giving you the information and being like, heads up, this yeah. has changed? Yeah, so it's something that we as brokers have to be on top of yeah. because if you're not, yeah, you then you're not your giving huge. your best service to a customer yeah. um, and you've also got the risk of submitting an application to a lender that no longer accepts Yeah, those, those conditions and so, stuff. So um, we constantly have got webinars with our lenders. Um, we have our bank medium, so they're like bank managers that yep. will come into the office and talk to us about what's changing. Email communication, yep. um, just on their portal as well, making sure that we're reviewing the policy as much as possible. Yeah, well, the, well I guess that one thing I find it, it it's interesting because we, from our perspective, we obviously are usually distrusted from the onset. It is it is what it is. Um, luckily enough, once you can break down that barrier to a client and they're willing to listen to you, most of the introductions that we try and make are actually to try and make their life easier. Mm. and it's been interesting in this probably the current climate last couple of years where most people have generally reached out to a bank first, mm. um, but it's hard to break through that thing. Maybe you should try and seek some alternative advice because it sounds to me that you're making it a lot harder on yourself than you need to. Uh, yeah. And that's the thing I find with um, brokers is that you, it's not a, uh, loyalty to any one particular stream like there's not only you've only got four products and that's all you can do let's open you up to 50 possibilities and see if yeah. we can make this work for you sometime you know which to me is makes perfect sense and I, I think I find too people don't actually realize that that's the case mm, exactly right and we have it happen constantly where people will communicate and say oh look I went to the bank that my mum and dad go to because that's the one they wanted me to go to but they said I couldn't get a loan and it was really disheartening so I gave up yep. like well yeah. you actually fit the criteria for a lot of lenders it's just a bank that you're going to you don't yeah their rules didn't their rules don't apply they don't specialize in guarantor loans or they don't specialize in the first home guarantee scheme so that's not an option available yeah yeah, yeah. um they might have high interest rates and going back to one of the common misconceptions that um we're speaking about before yeah. is that yeah if you go to a bank that's your only option. They're, yeah. they're not going to go and tell you the next or have a better interest rate. Or... <laughs> yeah. Well, they could make it work for you. Yeah. 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 It's like, sorry, you're done. Come yeah. back to us with more money. Yeah. yeah. So that happens mm. quite frequently where they've gone to one bank and they've given up. Yeah. They said, no, yeah. it's done. Yeah. My dream's over. Yeah. Like, oh, no, we've actually got 25 different doors here that you could travel yeah. through. Come exactly and right. Or let if us unlock you, them. a lot of the time, like if there's overtime involved, some lenders won't take into consideration overtime, where yep. some lenders will take 80% of your overtime as part of your income. Yeah. Some lenders won't take going back to single parents. Some Lenders won't take child support payments or family tax benefits while others will up to a certain age for a child. Yep. Um, so, yeah, going and speaking to a broker is a really good option. If you are someone that 
would prefer like if you're someone that's really on top of everything and loves doing your own research and would prefer to be involved every step of the way then yep. that's when you probably reach out to a lender but if you're somebody that you want to make you don't have time yeah, yeah. personally i if I wasn't doing my job, I wouldn't have time to reach out to 45 different lenders to see what all no, the options exactly, are. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't have time to research them as well. So, This is an odd segue, but my partner's got really into that show, The Good Doctor. Um, okay, yeah. And the premise of that is this, this doctor's autistic. So, yes, I love that show. Right? Yeah. So last night there was one that was we were watching and one of the fathers and a daughter had been in hospital her whole life. Like they were onto it. He was really onto it. And so he was in the um, the war room, you say, coming up with different solutions. And he came up with this, like, thought, digging into this information, but his his ideas were wrong. And they um, uh, what he, what they then followed what he wanted because he wouldn't approve a different surgery, you know, complicated things dramatically. And then later on, though, they the, the good doctor was able to resolve it and then his ideas meshed and was all great. And the reason why I use that as an example is that we can think that we're experts but the real, like he just said, you are not a doctor. It's like, you know a lot, but you're not a doctor. So it's that thing, you're still not working in the day to day. And so we can bring a lot of our knowledge and think, and I think once you know a little bit is that that's when you think you're an expert and you can get yourself in trouble. So it's that thought where you're going in going, look, I know what's right. I know what's best. It's like, yeah, but how many loans have you written in the last 12 months. Yeah, um, faking it till you make it yeah, in that, that scenario is probably not the way to go about it. Yeah, so then you can lock yourself into what you think is right, realising that only two degrees of separation away was a much better solution for you as well. Yeah. Mm. So what happened to the patient in the end? She's vibed. So the, but luckily enough, both ideas, because the, the, the good doctor, he, 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 he went into his autistic mode, which is legitimately how they phrase it, it's silly. But then he sees this 3D like thing come up in his head, and they it was it was all good. Um, but the thing is, I guess if we're to bring it back to <clears throat> grounding, sorry about Rena. Now you know how mine works. Um, the but the thing is that all they would need to do is go. Ray, could you? This is my situation. Can you help me? It's like and boom, you've got all that years of research across all these different um, levels of what could be possible, and all of a sudden you're going to open up ten different doors where they thought there was only one, even when they thought they were the expert. And that's how I always view. Um, working with great people is that they will they 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 their interests are aligned with yours. Mm. And one of my favorite things about growing a team now and having a group of experts when it was just myself and Emmanuel. Now we've got a team. Is if we have a scenario with a client and it might be a little bit more challenging, and we're not sure who to put them through. We'll all come together and we'll discuss it together yep. and bring all of our you've got a brain's together. trust of people. Yeah, and it's so awesome to see like a team normally in an industry where it is quite um, singular. Um, and, yeah, it's just so nice to see our team coming together and putting together a scenario to help a client out. Yeah. Well, well, one thing, I, when looking at the – so you were started around about 2017, is that right? Yeah. So with that, we were coming into a market that was absolutely booming. Obviously now we're shifting, so things are getting um, harder, for lack of a better term. What's that been like for you as the business now? What are you needing to do and what conversations you're having as people's um, expectations have changed? Yeah, for sure. So we're seeing a lot more people needing a lot more help. Originally back when we started, it was a lot, oh, awesome, this is what I can get. I'm happy with this. I am ha- I can buy a house for this amount. Yeah, yeah. Now it's they ask for a certain price and a lot of the time it's like, hang on, we've got to draw back those expectations, but also the property prices are really high. Yeah, yeah. Um, interest is yeah, higher than it interest was. interest is high as well and it's a lot of – um, people coming to us and saying, oh, look, we want to buy a house, but we know the market's not ready, so we should wait and things like that. But it's always coming back to that the market is always going to up and down and change, but yeah. your situation of when you can buy a house is not always going to be there. So buying when you're ready and when you've got the opportunity to or even buying when the market's ready. Because as we've seen with COVID, that was when the market was ready. Yeah, and the whole world changed. And then the whole world changed a couple of years later. So, yeah. and those people who bought then are probably not ready now. So, yeah, the great circle of life. I, I, I think that message is so um, important. Is we, I got an email from a client that was saying, Oh, should we, um, you know, basically, should we sell now? And my question is, Well, what are you going to do with that money? Yeah. yeah. And it's the same with, well, when should I buy is when it's suitable for you because yeah. it's very few people that are actually masters of picking a market. The rest are all lucky. Yeah. And it's that, again, the 
the cliche of the your your friends or your family going, well, I made all this money. It's like, mate, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so is that a message to you? Is it your finding that no matter what it is, you're just trying to get them set up and then letting them decide for when's right? Yeah, when the right time is for them. Obviously, you could be ready now, but when the market's ready, you could have had another child. So yes. your borrowing mm. capacity drops or um, your you need to have more savings because the grants aren't available because they are reviewed every 12 months. So yep. it's just really so important to make sure that you're working together. Um, and that's one thing we try to do with our clients as well. If they've reached out to us now and they're not quite ready because they don't have the savings or their income's lower, it's making that plan to get them to where they want to be in 12 months, two years, three years' time to be able to purchase. But then it's also making sure as a broker that we're communicating with that client every three to six months to make sure that their scenario hasn't changed yeah. and they're um, not falling behind where they need to be in the next three years yeah, yeah. Um, or two years or whatever it is. Or maybe they're more ahead of where they thought they would be. So maybe they've got they more can move up the timeline to, yeah, 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 for sure. We see it on a practical level where they'll go, look, I've got seven days until my uh, my thing expires. Like, mate, just relax. Like, this yeah. is not exactly how it works that way and yeah. you're completely missing the point. Mm. Um, the It's a constant negotiation and conversation with your mortgage broker just because the approval approval loses it in three days. Basically, correct me if I'm wrong, but really doesn't matter much. It's just that. No. And at the moment we're actually seeing less and less pre-approvals happen because they don't really mean much with interest rates changing all the time. Mm. Um, mm. So a lot of the time we're just checking with our clients to make sure that their borrowing capacity hasn't changed with the interest rates increasing um, and making sure that they're still on the right point so when they do find a property they are still able to purchase for the, what they're wanting to purchase for um, and then they're not getting to the stage where they get the contract and then they realise that their borrowing capacity yep, has changed. We've, we've blown yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that um, actually, well, that, that's an interesting um, scenario. So if you are a buyer that... You just just left your office one day ago, and like they're really excited to go out into the market. What would be um, as a race out the door? What's often you, you know almost like you try to grab them by the neck and just go, "Hey, well, sorry, wrong," you know, grab them by the shirt and just remember this. What would that thing you'd say to them be? I always try to tell them that your maximum borrowing capacity is this, but don't don't rely don't on that. Don't that. rely on that. Yeah. And don't go that high. Mm, mm. Um, Obviously, as brokers, we need to say what their maximum borrowing capacity is, but we also try to get them to draw it back a little bit so they've got that common ground of if they have an emergency and they need to get additional funds or they need to buy a new car or it's very common you buy a house, you want a new car, then you get pregnant and then you go on maternity leave and it all just builds up. So it's really important to make sure that they're not rushing. Um, again, on the rushing, we have a lot of people come to us they get their pre-approval, they're so excited yep, and they'll buy, buy anything. Yep, I'll take it. That they can get their hands on. And for some people they need to because they don't have the luxury of leaving at home or they need to get out of their rental. Um, so some people do need to rush. But when you don't need to rush, don't rush. Yep, I love that. Yeah. Great tip. Yeah. Yep. Can we can we have like maybe one or two more tips before we um before we sign off with the show today? Just mm-hmm. kind of um yeah, don't rush. I think my next tip would be having a really good team behind you. So having that really good mortgage broker or your lender um, for you, having a really good conveyancer. Obviously, it can be a little bit harder with real estate agents, um, but if you've got a really good agent that you're working with that can help you secure secure a property that you trust, um, just having that team of people around you that you know you can reach out to. Man, you guys um, would get on like a house on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's interesting, you know, like I've been really toying with the idea of branching up into moving into um, a buyer's agent um, option for our business Yeah. Um, because the it is a reality that, you know, um, uh, you know, the incentive changes because obviously an agent's going to be getting paid by the owner, not by the by the buyer. Um, but I don't think that's – there are some really good buyer's agents in Hobart at the moment. I think, though, generally speaking, it's a very under or misunderstood um, field. And also, too, the buyers will go, I'm not going to pay a guy to do that work yeah. for me. But, again, it's about building in that value where they can negotiate a better deal, a better strategy to to marry with what the broker has advised for you. Um, yeah. So and it can be really another person service. that you can help. We are very lucky with some of the buyers agents we have in Hobart, mm. um, but a lot of them are for the higher end or yes. the investment end. We don't have that many for the first home buyer um, educational side. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, it is definitely a market that. Jamie, 
Maybe well, that's something we, we can yeah. Yeah. Well, cause, but the, I guess the, your horses. The, the reality is, though, is that um, there's a commercial aspect to it because if um, providing the um, advice and time is really beneficial, but no one wants to pay you money, yeah. and ultimately you can only provide that service if you've got the capacity to earn, uh, which makes it very very difficult, you know. So, um, but that's something we, I've, I've really been thinking about a lot. We'd love to build in, um, but obviously um, the market needs to see that value as well. Mm-hmm. You know, hundred percent challenging. Yeah. All right. Um, one more tip. I just, I just. Feel something, like, there's something missing. Yep. You just need that one more. I just want that one more tip. I think reaching out to a broker at the very first start of your journey is really important. Um, even if you think you're three years away, we have clients that we've been working with the whole seven years that we've been open, okay. um, and that's really important because if you don't have a broker, you don't know where to start. Yep. You don't know what your borrowing capacity is, so you don't know what you need to save as your deposit. You don't know what. Um, you, yeah, so yeah. reaching out to a broker at the very first stage, understanding your needs, understanding your partner's needs as well and yeah, yeah. having that broker, you can really have that conversation. A lot of the time as brokers we feel like counsellors yeah. um, yeah. and like life advisors because we're getting that plan together to get them in place to be able to buy a house when they're ready to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, we can also, you know, get, sorry, I'm probably not making much sense. No, no, when you're speaking to a mortgage mm-hmm. broker, you also get that understanding of what is available to you as well. So yeah. reaching out to a broker as your first step, even if you don't think you're ready for the next five years, it doesn't hurt to speak to a broker straight away. As you were saying that, I was just kind of like, yeah, rather than just thinking of it as this like transactional relationship of like, I need the thing right now, I'm going to get it. It is like, well, let's build this relationship and work out what you need, whether it's two years from now or three years yeah. from now or seven years, you've had these clients. It's mm-hmm. like. I oh, know I, I trust Ray and the team at um, Don't Finance. Like they've got me covered, mm. and they're gonna yeah keep me informed across the journey. So yeah, that's yeah. actually really handy. It's oh. really sad after you deal with a client for a couple of years, and then they buy the house, and you only check in with them every six months instead yeah. of every couple of weeks. That's, that, that's how it works. So it's really it's really surreal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but I, I really like that point because the it, as you said, people think these relationships are transactional. Well, no, part of it is a transaction at some point in time. Um, but if you were, you know, like the first thing that I got was a credit card, you know, it, but I didn't have that information. That's just lower check you know, borrowing capacity by 100000 That's it. Right? So it's that it thing. depends on the <laughs> income. <laughs> the well, no, I mean, well, like when I'm 18, you know, so it's that thing where. I did too. Yeah, we'd be like the first person you speak with will build a relationship with some people about that can give you some points for your future. And it's like you may never want to buy a house. That's fine. But these are the options. And if that's something that's inter- important to you, Let's have that conversation today, knowing that nothing will come about for three to five years potentially. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and, and then the thing is, it's um, you know, it's it's on you. You're happy to build that relationship. Yeah, for sure. And uh, every broker we speak to in Hobart, like we talk about it all the time about building relationships, and every broker is the same. They're happy to speak with the client for a couple of years before that um transaction happens because a lot of the time, and I know we get a bad rap as mortgage brokers that we're dodgy and we try to do things just to make money. Yeah, yeah, but. I've really seen a shift in the industry and a lot of the time we actually care more about you being in a good position oh, to, yeah. be able to buy a house 100%. than anything else. Yeah. Like, I think the, yeah. the growth of your of your business in the seven year period is testament just a to testament that. to yeah. that to yeah. say that like I oh, know we're we're the good guys. We're not like kind of yeah, just kind of come around the back and we'll throw a loan at you. And yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll sting you for all you got. So Yeah, and I couldn't sleep at night. Like I'm sure not many people could no. sleep at night and for me, and I don't know if it's my age, but the rap that the mortgage broking industry gets, I've never met a broker that, who falls under that category. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, well, uh, same with our industry, you know. Yeah. Um, generally speaking, we're all nice people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just trying to yeah, get by. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think we might wrap it up there, but thank you so much for coming in and having a yarn my with pleasure. us. It's been a hoot. Um, for the people out there that um, aren't following you on TikTok, how else can they kind of yeah connect with Don't Finance? Yeah, so you can go through to our TikTok. All of our um, social medias are the same, so it's just at Don't Finance. Yep. Um, and our website's doantfinance.com.au. For sure. So pretty simple. It's all in the same name. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, again, thank you. And um, yeah, congratulations on seven years. And, and uh, it would be so amazing if Bub comes out on the, the birth of the business. That would be, that yeah. would just be amazing. So yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Good luck thank with that adventure beyond, um, yeah, motherhood is, parenthood is 
Yeah. The best adventure well, of all look, time. Well, I remember growing up in my parents' office, so if you guys don't have a desk as it is, you are going to need some bigger premises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Awesome. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Beautiful. You have been listening to The Property Pod, recorded and edited by 414 Media House in conjunction with 414 Property Co. This podcast is general information only and the thoughts and views expressed is the opinion of our panel and listeners should always seek then use their own investigation into any topic we discuss to ensure they fully understand their own situation. It does not constitute and should not be relied on as purchasing, selling, financial or investment advice or recommendations expressed or implied and it should not be used as an invitation to take up any agent or investment services. No investment decision or activity should be undertaken on the basis of this information without first seeking qualified and professional advice.